For most folks, this snake-infested Cumberland River slough would not be the place for a relaxing walk. I'm on the lookout for snakes as we go. <laughs> but Austin P. graduate student Natalie Smith and her friend Andy Huff would rather be nowhere else. Okay, this is where we found him, right up here. I, I love them, I've always loved snakes. I just think they're fascinating. They're, they're so different from any other animal. Natalie is studying the cotton mouse that live here. So far, she's caught 65 of them. We'll be able to determine where they're moving, how often they're moving, how far they're moving, when they're moving to their hibernacula, and then next spring, um, when they'll be moving out of it. Carefully, Natalie and Andy look in the usual places. Lots of places we'll see them are along the bank where the water meets it, or um, along these trees and button bushes, and right at the base where the stems start to come up. They'll be wrapped around there, hanging out right above the water level. Or like this cotton mouth curled up on a log. Oh, kind of got him. Can you come help me real quick? He's so light. Yay! Oh my God. In this swampy habitat, though, sometimes it's hard to tell a new snake from one that's already been caught. The way we mark them is you cut a portion of the right ventral scale and then a portion of the left, and based on where you cut them, it kind of gives them a, a unique number. Turns out this is snake number 10, caught last June. 390 grams. Since then, it has grown and gained weight. Part of Natalie's study involves how humans and snakes interact along the Cumberland River Bicentennial Trail. This can be a heavily used trail for snakes and humans, but all too often when both meet, the results are death for the snakes. So they're having to cross this trail every spring and fall to get to and from their summer and winter habitats. And that's where the conflict comes into play. People are killing them as they cross the trail. That's where Danny Bryan of Cumberland University helps out. I'm going to get the snake on the floor where I can have a little bit better access with the snake. Being against the wall, it's going to feel a little bit more at ease. No, we're not going to come this way. In the two. In the two. Danny the studied two the movement of rattlesnakes for years. Today he'll perform surgery on this cotton mouth to implant a transmitter. We haven't had any studies done on cotton mouths in Tennessee per se. We haven't had any movement, studies of movements, foraging behavior, activities. So I think this is going to be an outstanding project to see how and what our cotton mouths are doing here. The surgery takes just minutes, with great care not to injure the snake. He's going to recover pretty quick from this. As biology students from Tennessee Tech look on, Danny inserts the transmitter. Get the hole opened up, so I, I get just a little incision. You see there, just cutting the skin between the scales. I don't like using anything sharp in here because it can perforate the intestine. Make sure it goes under the ribs. Once sutured, the snake will soon be ready for its return to the woods and water. And it seals that up real well. Just like this cotton mouth a few weeks later. No. Don't buy the stick. As he's released, it's important to remember how to treat these snakes. Go home. They're not going to chase you down. Just go around them and leave them alone. You can watch them from a distance, observe them, see what they do. They're cool animals, but just leave them alone. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side. <laughs>